everybody, welcome to Harvest Kids. Mr. Isaac, we're on a boat. <laughs> this is a great boat, although it's a little rocky. Have you ever been on a boat where it was just big waves and they didn't seem to calm down? Yeah. Or have you ever been in a crazy windstorm and the wind is howling and it just won't ever, ever, ever stop? Whoa, <laughs> it stopped. Well, boys and girls, today we're gonna learn a Bible story about how Jesus calms the storm, and that's not all we're gonna do. We are gonna play a game, we're gonna make a snack, we're gonna have some fun, hear a Bible story, and do some worship, but it all starts with worship right now. So wherever you're at, stand up to your feet, that's right, stand up, and we're gonna get worshiping God, even if you're in a boat. So let's worship now. Jesus and believes in his name. To those people, he gave the right to become children of God. Do you believe in him? Do you receive him? Are you ready to turn your life around? If so, you have a reason to dance and you have a reason to sing. And guess what? There's joy in heaven when just one sinner repents and we're all sinners. So what are you waiting for?
Hey boys and girls, welcome to another Focus Up moment. This is where we take time out of our service to switch it up a little bit. We're gonna worship God and sing an old song that I learned as a kid called Peace Like a River. And if you're in a room or a classroom, you can dim the lights a little bit and maybe move to a different part of the room so that you can really focus on God in this moment. There are hand motions to this song. You don't have to do them or you can do them if you know them but we're gonna sing this together. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain i've got joy like a fountain in my soul i've got joy like a fountain i've got joy like a fountain i've got joy like a fountain in my soul we're gonna sing all three i've got peace like a river i've got love like an ocean I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got love like an ocean. I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Well, good job singing, everybody. That was a song that you probably heard before, but when we worship God and focus in on what he gives us, like peace and love and joy, then he can make those changes in our hearts so we can start to love others and have peace and have the joy of the Lord. And I pray that's what you found during our Focus Up moment today. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to our game today. It's called the Sailboat Shuffle. It's a physical game, which means you're going to move around a lot. So I need you to stand up to your feet and you're going to be running to this side of the room and that side of the room and the front of the room and the back of the room when I tell you these commands. But we are going to do it in a boat theme. Did you know that the left and the right, the front and the back of a boat are called something different? I'm going to teach you. Right is starboard. Say starboard. Good job. The left is called port. Say port. Okay. The front is called the bow. Now that's towards the screen, wherever you're watching this. The bow of the ship. And the back is called the stern. Okay, so let's review. Starboard, port, bow, stern. Now, when I call out these commands, it's your job to run to that location in the room. Are you ready? We'll start out with an easy one. This is the bow, it's at the screen. So, bow. Okay, oh, you're all right next to the screen. Stern. That's the back. Run to the stern. Okay, good job, everybody. Now you're gonna go to the starboard. Starboard location in the room. That is the right. Okay, good job, everyone there. Okay, let's do bow again. Bow, up by the screen. Okay, port, port, left side. All right, everyone over at the port side of the room. Okay, now we're gonna go a little bit faster and I'm not gonna give you any hints where these locations are. Okay, the bow. Run over to the bow. Port. Run back to the port. Starboard. Did you make it over to the starboard? Okay, stern. Stern, 
Make your way over to the stern. Good job. You should all be at the back of the room now. Now we're gonna go a little bit faster. Stern! You're already at the stern. You don't have to move anywhere. Okay, here we go. The port. Bow. Starboard. Bow. Port. Stern. Port. Bow. Stern. Bow, stern, bow, starboard. Everyone go to the center of the room now. You should go to the center and we're gonna do lightning speed. Are you ready? Port, starboard, bow, stern, port, stern, starboard, bow, port, Stern, bow, starboard, stern, center. And great job playing our game today, the sailboat shuffle. That was hard, you probably out of breath, but we learned some new boat terms as well. So that was a lot of fun. Okay, thanks for playing the game with me today. We'll see you next time, bye-bye. Hey kids, welcome back for another week of Unboxing the Bible. If you're not familiar with what it is, it's like when you get a gift on any special occasion, but it's better because it's the Bible. Today's word is S-T-I-L-L, -L. still. And today's word still comes from the verse Psalm 107, 29. The verse is, he made the storm be still and the waves of the sea were hushed. Now say it with me. He made the storm be still and the waves of the sea were hushed. Psalm 107, 29. Thanks for coming on this journey with me and unboxing the Bible. Stay tuned, up next is a Bible lesson. Hey everybody, welcome to our Bible lesson today. We are gonna be talking about how Jesus calms the storm. And so I thought we would see a storm in a jar and create a tornado. This is how you do it. Couple drops of dish soap like this and a little bit of vinegar. Now, we're gonna close the lid and shake it in a circle. And hopefully we're gonna see a tornado. Here we go. Whoa, you see the tornado? Cool. I'll do it one more time. Well, that's a cool experiment. Now on to our lesson. So we're in Matthew chapter eight and we're talking about how Jesus calms the storm. Jesus had been performing miracles in this region, driving out evil spirits, and many crowds were surrounding him. I mean, wouldn't you wanna go see what Jesus was doing? And so he was tired and he told his disciples, let's get in a boat and let's cross to the other side. So the disciples followed Jesus and they did what he said. These disciples were not expecting a sudden change of weather, a big storm, a fierce storm, shot up out of nowhere. And uh, this is the Sea of Galilee. I've been there and what happens is, is because it's a circle uh, lake sea, the waves do this. They shoot up real high and they are very powerful. They're not crashing waves like we would see on a beach, but they shoot up like this several feet and they can knock boats over and make them sink. It happened a lot. And so we don't know how long the storm raged, but eventually the disciples cried out to Jesus for help. Here in Matthew 8, 24 and 25, it says, Jesus was sleeping. What? He was sleeping on the boat? Yes, he was. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. Now you can imagine how tired Jesus was from ministering and healing all these crowds. So he was sleeping on the boat and the disciples woke him up anyways because they thought they were gonna die. And he woke up and replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely 
calm. So the disciples were in a situation that they thought was so terrible that they were even going to die. And Jesus, asleep in the boat, wakes up and he calms the storm. We can learn a lot from this in our own lives. And here are seven things. One is that we need to follow Jesus no matter what. Here we saw that the disciples followed Jesus into the boat and they went out into the sea. So we need to follow Jesus no matter what. Number two is that challenges are inevitable, which means bad things happen, but it's important to know who's in control of everything. But this point number two is that we are gonna face hard times. Point number three is that God is with you. Look around your boat, your life. Does it ever feel like God is not there? He promises in the Bible that he is always there, that he is with you. Our point number four of what we can learn is that these disciples, they called out to Jesus. They said, help us, we're in trouble. And that's what we need to do when we're in trouble, when we're going through storms in our life, we need to call out to Jesus. Point number five, it's good to rest. Jesus was resting after a hard day's work. So it's a good thing to rest. Now, I know that none of us probably could have rested during that storm in a boat, but Jesus did. He must have known something. <laughs> well, point number six is that Jesus has power over everything. He has the authority. He can tell all the wind and the waves to calm down, and they do. And what does that mean for us in our lives? That he can do that for us as well. And we can call out to him and ask him to do that. Well, our seven and final point is we don't have to be afraid. Now the disciples, they were, ah, the boat, it's going to sink. And Jesus was just sleeping. And when he woke up, he calmed the storm. And so these are seven points of what we can learn from this Bible story. But I want to take it even further. And I want to say that you can ask God to calm the storm in your life. Now, am I talking about heavy rain and wind and tornadoes? Well, here's the thing. If you're caught in a tornado or a dangerous situation and you need help, you are fearful because you might get hurt from the storm, absolutely you can call out to God and say, please calm this storm. Um, we're in a hurricane and I fear for my safety and that's an absolutely okay thing to pray. But there are also storms in our lives, at school, at home, in sports, in the world, we go through these storms. Maybe it's fighting in our houses with our brothers and sisters or fighting with our parents. Maybe it's a bully at school. Maybe it's something that is out of your control and it would be called a storm. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's something where someone gets really sick. Oh, that's a terrible storm in our lives. But guess what? We can still hold on to the truth that God is with us. He has authority over everything and we can put our trust in him. And that's my encouragement for you today is to ask God to come into the storm, to calm the storm. And you know, even if he doesn't calm the storm right away, we know that he is there with us through it and he can control everything. So let's put our faith and trust in him, knowing that he's in control. Would you pray with me right now and thank God for always being with us? And we can even ask him to calm the storms that we're going through. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for this Bible story. We thank you that you have the power to calm all these storms in our lives. And we ask you to do that right now. Whoever's listening, whoever's praying right now, if they're going through a storm, a hard time at home, maybe... Um, they're fighting with someone, and Lord, we need you. We need you to calm that storm. So we ask for you to come into each one of these situations, Lord, and we give them over to you. And we just thank you for being powerful and for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, and thanks for having this study with me in the book of Matthew today. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye. Welcome to Snacky, Snacky Time. Time. I'm Sophie. And I'm Isaac. And today, we're going to be making a little boat, okay? Ooh. It's a boat from, here's what we'll need. We have our toothpicks. Good. We have our apple. That's going to be the base of the boat. Oh. We have fruit strips. Hey. Yum. Cheese. Oh, I love cheese. Cheese and apples are good. 
We have plates, because we need to do it on something. Protect the tablecloth. And then for this snack, you're gonna need help from a grown-up, because we're gonna be cutting the apple using a knife. So make sure that you have a grown-up that can help you. Okay, should we get started? Yes. What is step one, Sophie? Step one, we're gonna cut our apple. So I'll cut it in half, and then we'll each get a wedge, okay? Okay, so we cut our apple in half, and then this one I cut into smaller pieces. So you're gonna have wedges. We'll break this apart, and let's see. Let's cut off that intersection, because we don't wanna eat that part. Okay, so we have our apples cut. You Thank got you yours? for my slices. Mm -hmm. We'll put those down on our plate, and then next, we're gonna use the cheese to cover the top of the apple. Okay, so now that we got our cheese, we'll pull it out. And you can use any kind of cheese and any kind of apple, whatever you like best. So now that we got our cheese, we're gonna cut it so that it's gonna cover the top of this apple slice. So now that we have our cheese on top of our apple, we're gonna grab the toothpicks. And we're gonna put these right in the center of our boat. It'll go through the apple. Perfect. Okay, Great. we're almost done. Now we gotta grab those fruit leathers. So what we're gonna do, we'll cut this or tear it in half. And this is gonna be our sail. So you gotta kind of bend this one. Let's see. Poke it through one side. And then fold it and poke it through that side. It'll kind of bend. It should look something like this. Awesome, look at that. This was a great idea, Sophie. And now you can eat the boat. Do you want to take a bite? Sure, let's try it out. Ready? Yep. Mmm. Mmm. Super good. Cheese and apples is yummy. That's such a good combo. With a little fruit in there too. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for joining us for Snacky Time. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us for today's lesson. Yeah, hey, uh, Pastor Mike. Um, I learned a lot in our lesson about God's ability to bring peace to the storms of our life. Uh, do you think we could pray to him right now to bring peace to our situation? Yeah, yeah, sure, let's do it. Dear Jesus, please calm our storm, Lord, the storm that we're in. We believe that you have the power to do that and that you are God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Hey, hey, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys and girls, Thank you for joining us today in our service. We learned that Jesus can calm our storms. And of course, we're not just talking about when it rains and when the wind blows. But yes, God can calm those storms too. He can calm tornadoes. He is all powerful. But he can also calm the storms in your lives. And those are the ones that happen maybe with your brothers or sisters, or at school there's a bully. Even in the home, sometimes storms are a brewing in the home and we need to pray to Jesus to ask him to calm those storms. Boys and girls, you can do this. You can talk to your creator and say, Jesus, please come into this storm and bring peace and calm the storm. And so that's our encouragement for you today that we learned in the Bible that Jesus calmed the storm to the disciples and it proved that he was God and he is powerful. So we encourage you to pray to him today to calm your storms. And we had a lot of fun with you today. If you'd like to see more services like this, you can find us on YouTube and Instagram at Harvest Kids Live. And we can't wait to see you next time. Well, thanks for joining us today, Mr. Isaac. No problem, I had a ton of fun. We'll see you next time, bye. Whoa, hey, I wonder what kind of storm this can make. Huh? Wait, Pastor Mike, no!